So let's speak about PhD students and how they are able to improve, increase their chances to end up with an offer from a prestigious consulting company. So we now have a lot of data points with regards to how PhDs are performing and what is actually different and what are the, yeah, let's call them, systematical issues they are usually facing, especially if they are coming from a um, non-business or non-economics uh, background. So usually PhD students um, likely uh, spend years uh, honing their research skills and becoming an expert in their field, right? But when it comes to consulting job interviews, the academic background may just not be enough. And in fact, sometimes it's even in your way because many PhD students um, struggle to navigate the interview process and then are ultimately rejected for consulting roles, not because they would not be smart enough, but because they cannot show the required capabilities as they have never developed them. And one of the main reasons for, for this is that PhD students usually lack a pragmatic approach, right? In science, uh, there is not too much respect for a pragmatic approach, but for a highly rigorous and uh, systematic and repeatable and um, uh, peer um, evaluated uh, way um, that is like the context of the academic setting. And Uh, PhD students might just be accustomed to, to looking for the 100% solution of a problem. But in, in the consulting world, this is very different. In the consulting world, this is not even uh, always possible, nor is it desirable. So clients usually have a very restricted budget in terms of time and also resources to find the best possible solution and, and there is a reason that it's called the best theoretical solution and not the solution that is usually uh, getting things done. So that is one issue. Um, being pragmatic and develop uh, also ideas to not only look for the best theoretical and possible solution but for a pragmatic solution that will get the job done, right? So PhD students usually struggle significantly more with coming up um, with these pragmatic ideas. The second part of what we are seeing is that PhD students um, way more likely face an issue with the way how are they communicating. Because in research, you, you, you usually are accustomed to um, use a specific language and also are investigating problems in a, in a bottom-up way. But in consulting, you need to be able to communicate the findings in a top-down manner, highlighting the, the bigger picture and the strategic implications for your work, right? So oftentimes the approach that you take in order to communicate is exactly the opposite of the approach that you take in order to investigate. And this is something that is hard for PhD students to get used to and requires a lot of dedication, patience and guidance. <laughs> and I know what I'm talking about here. <laughs> and some people uh, watching this also know exactly what I'm talking about, but it's worth it to work on this. And lastly, um, PhD students might be afraid to ask question on, on, on basic concepts, right? On terms they are not aware of. And um, because they feel, they feel they should know them because they confuse this with um, being uh, smart enough to end up with a job um, and, and you would not need to ask uh, about terms and definitions um, and uh, meanings of, of what the interviewer is, is asking and telling you, right? But this is actually required and even um, this, this is important to get used to because guess what? Um, the MBBs and also other prestigious consulting companies are not hiring for your previous knowledge. The, the MBBs, they're hiring you for being um, a, a smart and intellectual person that is showing the capacity to solve complex problems for a client. And it doesn't matter if you don't know some um, 
business terms that graduates, for example, might might know because they have studied it or something, uh, or um, yeah, just uh, used an internship or something to acquire them. The, the point here is don't be afraid to ask because asking can be done also in, in very different and various ways. And it doesn't need to be like, oh, I don't, I've never heard about this. Uh, I didn't study this. Um, I have no background here. You can, also, you can also frame that very differently. For example, by asking, so what exactly would the client mean? What would it mean in the specific of the context of the client to X, Y, that, right? And um, here, usually, there are two challenges. One is to ask at all, which is the main challenge, because um, many PhD students believe they would need to know this, but this is not the expectation from your interviewers. And second, the way how you're asking that question without sounding dumb, right? Um, but that is all only fine-tuning, because in the end, the major thing that you will need to get done is to get the information and the understanding what actually is discussed, right? And to do this Ill illegally is then uh, a different topic. I hope really this was helpful um, because this is also something you should try to get into your um, routine of, uh, of, of practicing for your interviews. And it will help you big time, not only in your job interviews with consulting companies, but essentially with whatever you want to do if it is in the business world later on after you've finished your PhD. So good luck with that.